Little Spring Tavern Tales, my name is Nimsh, and I'm here with Raven and Lothar from the new PGL studio in Bucharest, Romania. We are here with an amazing tournament, three days of playing, a Swiss tournament, $20,000 prize pool. But first, how are you doing, guys? Yeah, I'm doing really good, yeah. First time in Bucharest for me, so that's always fun. And yeah, uh, and yeah looking forward to this tournament. Well, it, this is like the fifth or sixth <laughs> time for, for us, Nimsh, right? <laughs> yeah. PGL is uh, is an organization that I think it's now a well-established brand in the Harsen community. They're always standing up um, to their standards when it comes to organizing tournaments, and they are the groundbreakers, right? They made the first DreamHack. The great first DreamHack Bucharest was 128 people or 256. So somewhere, somewhere between that. A lot of a lot of people. A lot of people in <laughs> single elimination best of three. It was kind of a struggle for, for many people, but it was the first tournament ever made. Uh, I mean, a LAN tournament ever, and it was a groundbra groundbreaking experience for the community. So it feels kind of nostalgic to be here in this new studio and to be a part of this. Absolutely, and uh, the first tournament that you've mentioned has been won by, by Gara, who qualified for this tournament as well, and then mm -hmm. the second edition was won by Thais, who is here with us as well, qualified. Yeah, it's but actually a cool story, right? Yeah, they, they did just come back, the champions of the, of the previous uh, DreamHacks or uh, PGL tournaments. But the tournament structure um, itself, let's, let's talk about it. So, Raven, can you take us through the tournament, how it, how it looks like? Yeah, so the first day of the, well, for, to start off, these guys had to qualify online. So there were four qualifiers of 128 man. Uh, so that's, you know, really tough uh, brackets to really fight through there. And then, uh, so today we're going to have the Swiss, which is going to be five rounds, and all the players are going to play through that, and we'll be taking you through those games today. Uh, the top 16 cut from the Swiss will go into a single elimination on Saturday, and then it will continue on there from Sunday to crown a winner. And just talk about the tournament in general. If we could ask any player, how do you want a format to be? I think this is pretty much pretty much it you know everyone loves swiss and uh, you know just getting a chance to play so many games and you know really see you can come out on top there and then into the brackets after that so i, I remember really liking this it, it's almost ideal scenario right? yeah exactly like yeah. the only better thing that could have maybe changed in the future is a qualifier made in swiss but it's a it's a thing to hard, hard to organize uh in the online community but um matter of evolution of our, of our game, right? Absolutely, so. yeah. So we will be definitely looking uh, into the qualifiers in the future uh, to be in the Swiss format, but uh, the players who went through the single elimination, let's uh, see who actually is here today with us, because we have 32 players overall, and I do recognize a lot of those names. Well, there's a lot of players, and I would be lying to everyone if I would say that I remember every single name right now, because it's 32 players, but a few names that are known to the public. So it's Gareth, Fais, Crane, you need Crane, kind of had a little break for re less time, less weekend, right? So it's a cool, cool uh, to see him uh, right now here in this tournament. We have Powder, uh, we have also Moody that was twice in top 16 in previous Bucharest uh, tournaments, and uh, we have like about who was also qualified for the previous Bucharest if I remember correctly. Uh, we have the Fishu who was who is known from the um, French community. He was one of the, mm, the players that was. Uh, in the top eight, if I remember correctly, of the first European Championships that wasn't named European Championships back then. And we have Gaming King from Fate to Karma, and we have... Uh, Janet Druid from Poland! Yeah, <laughs> he was qualified <laughs> for the Sitsuri Cup yeah. back then, like that was two, one year and a half, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that absolutely. Second and he's one of the top um, oh, pro players from Poland at the moment. Uh, he's playing with uh, one of the best. Uh, Raven, is there anybody else who stands out for you? Yeah, I think, well, I was, I was just going to say, it's a good mix of players overall, because something that's uh, coming to light at the moment is, you know, as all these tournaments are becoming more open and less invites, then, you know, everyone's worried about, oh, you know, the top pros won't be able to get in or whatever. But, you know, you look at Ty, Skyra, as you said, Lothar, and, mm -hmm. you know, not really too much of a problem. But also, I'm actually looking forward to seeing, there's a lot of French players in this tournament. It's something we don't get to see enough, in my opinion. So uh, I'm looking forward to how those guys are going to do. I, I just have to pitch in because <laughs> I'm really feeling sorry for my teammate RDU who was twice one win short to qualify for this <laughs> event and he's a native, right? <laughs> so yeah. uh, he's living in Bucharest so it kind of feels bad for him. So. But this also means that the qualifiers were really tough and you know, just qualifying for this tournament is, uh, is a great achievement already and now where the players are in, they still have to win at least one round to get in the money because... Uh, well, not the run one round, but this is a Swiss tournament. But you yeah. want to get to top 16 to be actually getting the reward. Uh, top 32 doesn't give you anything yet. 
yeah, top 32 is not the um, the goal for the players. Of course, everyone is aiming for the win. But uh, I guess this is the time where our um, etiquette when it comes to tournaments should slowly switch to um, get more exposure to the top players that get to the top 16, get to the top 8. It's not. It shouldn't be not. It shouldn't be only about the winner. It should be about the players that are getting to the final eight, final 16. And this is how it looks in other card games and I think this is something that will be very important to get into our community something that people should consider to not only remember that guy that won that tournament and not care about the other dude that was in the finals right dude uh, sorry for actually saying dude because we have two females in this tournament which is something new yeah we absolutely do have two females uh, but uh, we just seen the players playing and this means that the round one is almost ready to start which means everybody's playing it's not like only one pair and uh, that's the swiss stage so raven can you tell us a bit more about the swiss like how does it work Yes, sure. So in Swiss, um, your first match is effectively random. You get matched up against someone, and then if you win, you move on to... Well, everyone moves on to every single stage, so you play all five stages of this one. And uh, the winners will then face other winners in the next game, and then the losers will face other losers. And then that form of matching people based on the performance will continue until the end of the, the Swiss stage, and then the top 16 with the overall score and tie break will go through. I, I really like it because if you come here to Bucharest to play, you will at least play five matches. Yeah, and that's super cool. And, and a lot of players were missing that because where, when they were like veterans of card games in general, like, well, I guess I'll travel to this country for three days and then I lose to the play first one. match. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah, well. And also it has like another effect on what you're saying about, you know, uh, sort of celebrating consistent top finishes as well mm -hmm. because, you know, the Swiss stage, that's five matches and you've got to get top 16. These guys have to qualify online and then they've got top 16 tomorrow and then so on. So getting to top eight or even top 16 is actually a really good performance overall. Yep. And the more like consistent these players manage to do that, the more they should be represented. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we also gathered for you guys specifically some statistics uh, for this tournament. And as you can see, <laughs> this is the classes. Well, this actually, Paladin is not the first one, right? Yeah, these, these aren't in order <laughs> of, of, of use, but, you know, um, just looking back on uh, uh, the past few weeks of, for example, the EU and NA prelims, you know, Druid, Warlock, Paladin were definitely the top three classes seen overall. Mm -hmm. We can see a lot of Warrior as well. But the safest, right? Yeah, yeah, just, just sort of the, the overall, just steadiest uh, classes. But what's really interesting, actually, is Zero Hunter. Oh, oh, by the way, let's talk about what is the format because that should be the context of this, right? Yes, because absolutely. Because we have True. last year standing with no ban. So if you bring an example, a paladin, you're sure that you can play it. So what's the last year standing? Just to explain to the viewers who are new and they In are used words, to conquest. If you win with a deck, you stick to it. And if you lose with a deck, it gets eliminated. And you play a best of five, so you need to win three matches. That's about it. So you prepare um, really good decks that can actually carry you with uh, maybe free zero specifically. Yeah, so can happen. And Druid is that deck. Paladin, Secret Paladin is super um, consistent as well. And the Warlock, I assume this Warlock is actually not 22 Zoo decks, but uh, <laughs> Zoo might be the most popular anyway. Yeah, we did see a, a lot of Zoo the past few weeks in some tournaments, but also a lot of people bring things like, uh, I mean, I think we saw Fibonacci bring uh, Demon Lock to the NA prelims and he qualified. So yeah. uh, there's definitely room with Warlock to, uh, and that's one of the benefits of the class, right? At the moment, there's definitely a few archetypes that can work and maybe people bring in a surprise, but because of Zoo is just so steady and so consistent, it's really difficult, as you said, Lothian, last year I was standing. Mm -hmm. You could 3-0 with Zoo. Yeah. Pre like pre pretty easily, actually. Like the deck's powerful. Uh, I mean... I mean Every single aggro deck can free you because that's the nature of the beast, uh, so to say. Although we have no hunters here, but uh, uh, basically, what it, when you consider an aggro deck, especially in a freshly established meta, an aggro deck is always an option, a stable option, because they don't care about your opponent's strategy usually. Right? There are some there are decisions that you have to make during the game, but it's uh, safer to play an aggro deck because they always can win because they yeah, stick to the strategy. Stick to the guns. Yeah, well, you have to make your opponent goes. react, right? Yeah, exactly. As opposed to you being reactive in the match. And guys, we see our players for the first round. Obviously, uh, everybody is playing the first round at the same time, but we uh, picked uh, Karolinka versus Crane to be the first pair. And uh, you've also mentioned there is a female player, two, two female players actually, which is great. Uh, they qualified and now they are in the top 32. But uh, what do we know about Crane maybe first, Raven? 
So Crane's actually an ex-teammate of mine. I used to be on London Conspiracy. He's an extremely good player. He practices with uh, a lot of the top end pros, like some of the members of G2, mm -hmm. as far as I'm aware. And he's swiftly becoming known as the guy who just doesn't quite make it. You know, like he gets so far in these tournaments. I think it, in the past, like other than this qualifying, the past like six qualifiers for big tournaments, he's always been one round off, which is a shame because everyone who knows Crane knows he's an incredible player. I just feel like he just needs the moment to actually break out and uh, take the tournament. And I think a tournament like this, where there's a big Swiss stage, I would expect him to do very well because, you know, he's super good at ladder. He, he always finishes like extremely high every season. And uh, I think this is his type of tournament, definitely. And what do we know about Karolinka from Czech Republic, Lothar? Did you have a chance to talk to her? Uh, no, but I Thank you for, for um, <laughs> asking this question. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I, I, what I know is that she is from Majestic Lions, from the team from, from Czech Republic, and uh, that's about it, because she's a new face uh, in the scene, and I uh, would really love to see more people, especially qualified people, people that play a uh, Swiss tournament, to get through, to get the story. Right, yeah. sorry, in the in the, uh, into the scene and maybe have some interviews with those people and get to know them, because that's how we get to know people like Life Coach, people like Firebat, uh, people like Thais, Thais Ardu, um, Gara. Gara, yeah, those people that are not established for streaming, they are not established by being in the first fight night or whatever, right? They are being established because they played all those tournaments, all those online qualifiers. They went through all those grueling, uh, uh, gruesome tournaments in the beginning, like those land with single eliminations. And this is the chance for all those players that are now in, in this tournament to shine and to put that name Alter. Yeah, there's, there's definitely like dual goals, isn't there? For a lot of the uh, lesser known players, uh, not unknown, but just lesser known, uh, there's the goal of, yeah, I want to come to this tournament and win. Of course, you know, you've qualified, but also for, for, for these, there's like just the be benefit of being able to be on camera, play some games, get further in the tournament, and mm -hmm. become a bit more recognizable in the scene. And get the experience, because that's exactly, something yeah. that a lot of people are, d are disregarding is the fact that. When you play comfortably from your own seat in your home and you can go to the bathroom, you can take it, you, know, you can make a tea like in, in, in between the games, you're in your comfort, comfort zone and then you go to a tournament and you don't have that. And that affects, yeah. that affects a lot when it comes to players' behavior, um, to decision making even, because y you can be stressed out, you can be uh, even thinking not about the game, you can be thinking about how do I look in the camera right now? Or or like even is that what you think noise? about, Lothar? No, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you, I'm I was going to say, you don't need to, you're fine, you're fine. Don't, don't you worry. Actually, what's <laughs> important, I think, uh, is the, the white noise and the, the different experience because as you're, as you're saying, it's, it's much different sitting there, but also the fact that you're actually hearing the white noise, not hearing anything uh, which is uh, outside of, of the zone, of the play zone, and you have a real person in front of you you have to look at them and they look at you and you see facial expressions. So, for example, you're, you're playing versus Druid and then... The, the player smiles. They're so like, "Oh, he has the combo." <laughs> oh, it's Mind turn games. seven. <laughs> hmm, maybe I should play around the dinner <laughs> later. Oh, you know that kind of stuff. But uh, I would really love to see someone making a tournament when the players are sitting in a booth and they can talk to each other and we can hear what they're saying. Because that's something that I really miss from from the um, other card games. The banter. The in-game banter, yeah, the, the, and the and B slight BM, and <laughs> <laughs> but but you do know that if you put some players in a booth and they can talk to each other and, and you can even encourage it, they will still remain silent. Imagine Colento and Hoy. Yeah, well, that can happen, but there will be some people like let's say, let's take Kibler. Oh, Kibler would talk <laughs> to you like 100% like all the time. Yeah, and that will be awesome to see, right? This is something that um, maybe it's a play, uh, maybe it's a it's a thing to put into the tournaments in the future, right? Absolutely, but maybe. Let's jump into the game. Yeah, game is starting right now, and we see a mounted raptor instead of a shadow of extramas, I guess, because it's a wild growth. So um, this deck is not an aggressive druid, I would say. It's a mix between. Uh, Mid-range, right? Yeah, it's I just, mean, a, it's it's just a, a different. Mix. It's, it's just, it's a, just a different range. option, right? You know, there's yeah, exactly. um, that's what I kind of like about the card. Uh, that there's just uh, an alternate, and sh shade is definitely one of those cards in in Druid where if, if people are changing out cards, you know, you see cards like uh, MCT, like Mind Control Tech, and things like that. So it is very adaptable, and I, I kind of like the Raptor. It's something a bit 
different. And if you can get it out early, you know, it might make your opponent think, oh, okay, this is a more aggressive deck. So then, you know, alter plays and maybe make it a little bit, you know, more beneficial on your end. It can be quite awkward. Like today I was testing a game uh, specifically for this tournament and we got uh, Viper, like the 2-1, the, the, the rogue. How is it called? With the death touch? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it kills whatever it damages. Yeah, it, it, and yeah. it, it drops snake from Raptor pit. twice. Snake. Uh, snake pit. Snake pit. Snake pit. Pit snake. Pit snake. Yeah. Yeah. Snake pit. I was like, sorry. We like, got that, guys. We got that. Like <laughs> we do this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But uh, this is a really good matchup for Karolinka to start things off uh, because Freeze Mage has trouble versus Druid. And there is a couple of reasons. First, there is a hero power to gain armor and be able to um, maybe cheat in the combo when the Alex Shasha drops Druid will not have 15. Maybe he will have 17 to 18. There is also Keeper of the Grove for a possible Doomsayer to deal with the board or maybe unsilence the frozen target. Not only that, <laughs> there's <laughs> an Kazan Mystic there sitting is, there in the hand there is a against Kazan a Freeze Mage. Well, which which kind of skews the unfavorable matchup for, for the for death trap. player it's a death to trap a 90-10 right percentage. <laughs> Which yeah, is kind of one-sided when you think about card games in general. Yeah, especially because it's already in hand. It's not like, well, you know, I'll play Kazan in the deck. Hopefully I'll get there at the right time and go forward with that. It's like, nope, I've got it as and when. I actually need to use it. And there's all, you know, so many options already for Caroline Kerr. There's, you know, the Raptor and the Keeper of the Grove. Got the low drops and then even into Ancient of War, which is actually going to be really difficult for the Freeze Mage to deal with unless there's mm -hmm. a good mm -hmm. uh, Frost Nova Doomsayer. But again, we do see Druid does play those Keeper of the Grove to silence them off there. Is there interesting hand overall it's it's not something you see often in the druids uh, at least uh, we haven't recently with mounted raptor and chasm and ancient of war some people play one ancient of war but uh, to see all those cards in, in the opening hand in the first game of the tournament is quite surprising yeah well double frostbolt double icelands that's a quite a burst i would say you can w with the thanos right now on board you can deal nine damage with three mana yeah but what's the point yeah there's a point of course but uh, just an option, right? Because if you would feel like I will be the aggressor this time, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the aggressive freeze mage player. Just a certain example. I uh, can uh, kill you from my hand. I, I, I will, you know, just put it out there and see how you react. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and maybe just I'm intimidate someone and be like, yeah, okay. Maybe I'm a spell power mage that you <laughs> do have no idea that existed till now, right? Or like uh, this matchup is so bad, I can just do it for the lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is actually looking pretty grim though for Crane because he doesn't have any of the early cards you want as the Freeze Mage. In almost any matchup, you want the Mad Scientist to get the secret straight out of your deck. Mm -hmm. uh, you want the Frost Nova's Doomsayer to do that turn five combo to just lock Horror. out everything. Blue Horder, yeah, just anything early. I mean, the Arcane Intellect was good and this Thanos being used pretty much as Cycle at this point is good and he's got the late game burst, but just nothing to quite stall out the game. And with the wild growth from Kalinka early, it means she has been able to ramp and uh, push into these sort of mid range minions that Druid's uh, known for. Absolutely. What I really like is that Crane um, is, like evaluated his hand and said, well, this Thalnos is useless right now. I need the cycle. And what I really even like the most is that he didn't sacrifice the Thalnos during his turn for the Raptor to ping it because he knew that um, Karolinka w will be in a situation when she has to kill it because she will be worried about the spell power more. So you basically by not attacking into the Raptor, you save yourself at least three damage, so you can treat Falnos as a healing card as well. But not only that, you deny the death rattle effect, which would stock with the with the damage, right? Yeah, would be stack stacking up with the damage. Yeah, yeah I, th I think it's really good when you can you, you put yourself in a position where you know your opponent can't ignore your minion. So even if it looks like a good trade for you, even though the Thanos into the Raptor wasn't, sometimes you know you can put a, a Mad Scientist into something where it's like, oh, actually, they probably need to trade into me more. So then you just gain that, you know, squeeze out that extra damage every single turn. Also, it's exactly how Freeze Mage works. At, the, at this point, Crane doesn't know that there is the Kazan Mystic uh, in the hand of, uh, of Karolinka. So he has to do the best out of the hand he has. So draw cards and sustain. Yeah, this is definitely uh, not the opening Crane one, whereas Karolinka looks uh, it's like she's doing really well. I mean, the Shredder's a really good card versus Freeze Mage. Look at that good placement. Oh, oh, Twitch will be loving yeah. that. <sighs> so good. But looking at this, um, it, look, the more I see this Druid deck, the more I think it's actually sort of built to beat Freeze Mage even harder, because, it, you know, the Raptor's an additional Death Rattle, the, the Kazan Mystic helps, and it's just like, uh, th this I've deck 
that already, you know, everyone would probably agree performs well versus Freeze Mage, is just going to lock it down even more. I, I think the Chasm Mystic is not because of the Freeze Mage, it's just because there's a possibility of people playing Temple Mage, and this um, this archetype of the mage has such a huge advantage over Druid in general, right? Because of the Temple Swings of Mirror Entities. So the Chasm Mystics actually f flips the switch and it's the other way around. Yeah. It helps against Freeze Mage, but it's not needed yeah. so much. It, it but it it immensely helps against Temple Mage. It, ma it makes one of your worst matchups a lot better, right? Yeah, it's kind of exactly. like a meta call as well, because you know everybody is... Uh, like most of the field will play Midrange Druid, Zoo, and Secret Paladin, right? So if some people actually bring the Temple Mage, as Ecop did in the uh, Hearthstone Champions League, you want to counter that, but um, Chasm Mystic is still useful versus Paladin that almost everybody plays. Yeah, I think um, something that, that although Kezin is isn't perfect because everyone's instant response versus Paladin is yeah you know you're not going to take away all six secrets for the Kezin, but when they play the secrets early, it can actually be pretty decent if you just steal off an Avenger or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Crane is still missing the Doomsayer. Um, because uh, yeah, but uh, look at the damage. I'm just uh, counting how much damage can he have. Can it, can he burst if he draws an example? Let's say. Well, 14 this turn if he wants to go for it. Uh, too bad he used that Falnos, right? Uh, but it's more than 14, right? Because he can torch. Torch as well. Yeah. 17. Y you can also think about why does he have the Forgotten Torch in his deck? That means is he playing a Rin Jackson in the deck? Because that might be one of the reasons why he has that minion uh, in his deck. I yes. think it's because Fibonacci played it in his Freeze Mage and uh, people started actually playing one Fireball, one Torch, was it? But why is the reasoning? Because I was using fla uh, Roaring Torch and Freeze Mage just to play Reno Jackson. Yeah, yeah but then you have to change a couple more cards. Like, you, you basically play uh, Loot Quarter, Novice, and... Yeah, uh, but that's not a problem. They, they achieve the same thing. Uh, the only issue is that you play, still have to play double Frost Novas, double... Double blizzards. Yeah, example, it's a, bit right? a different deck, right? But the, you yeah. play the torch instead of fireball because you can cast torch twice. Like in the very beginning of the game, you can use torch to remove a knife juggler, maybe, and then you have it back as a fireball, mm. more or less. And as the doomsayer MVP, which is needed against every single deck that <laughs> plays minions on board. But so, I, so most decks, right? I yeah, believe there is a decks. keeper though uh, in the hand still. Of course, there is. But Crane has to go for it anyway, right? It's either blizzard. Blizzard and stall, stall longer. Okay. We'll just go for it right now. But uh, yeah, that's really interesting play that he didn't go for the doomsay there because it seems very straightforward and obvious. But um, maybe the idea is, oh, you know, I'll, I'll just freeze him this turn. I can probably do the same again next turn because we did see the second blizzard. I, I think it's uh, the reasoning is that with the keeper, maybe uh, he he hopes he will see a silence on one of the minions and attack. Yeah, but uh, Caroline can knows better. I mean, there's no reason to silence your minion when you don't have a push for lethal or at least bra to break the ice block. And the thing which, which uh, might have pushed Crane to not use the Doomsayer this turn is the fact that if he uses the Blizzard, freezes the board, the board is so big anyway that Karenko doesn't want to develop it further anyway, just not overextend because she's sitting at four cards. So basically what you get by stalling that one turn, you get one more card draw, uh, for both players, right? So there's a chance of throwing the Keeper anyway, but for Crane, it makes more sense right now to have that card draw because he is in a worse position. Actually, yeah, he, with he, that wants, needs, he needs those cards more. That's right, but with that Fireball uh, draw that he got, uh, he got even more damage now because Fireball, Frostbolt, Icelands, and Pyroblast, that's uh, 23 damage. Yeah, I think it's really it's a sign of a, a good freeze mage player when you can identify what you need to do to win the game. Because you know, a, a lot of freeze mage, a lot of players think, oh, we just alexstrasza them and then kill them, right? That's yeah. the overall plan, which it is a lot of the time. But sometimes you don't draw alexstrasza, so you have to do something else. And as you said, drawing into that fireball, uh, you know, was a signifier for Crane and, and Riley. So especially with the second one, where it's like, yeah, I can probably just burst him down from 30. This is fine. Over the course of a few turns, of course. Yeah, exactly. Like, he is missing an ice block because uh, if, if he starts bursting right now, he <laughs> might actually lucky for him that he is missing the ice block. Yeah, because uh, there's a the mystic, but he cannot just uh, burst face. He has to uh, freeze at least. Well, he has a win next turn anyway, so this is lucky for, for him that he has the Pyroblast right now in his hand. For Karolinka, it looks kind of bad, because now she can't push for lethal. I really like the play of the Emperor last turn, because that, that's the additional damage that she needed to push it for lethal. But now it's 
9, that 11, was, 12, 14. Over. And that's it. She's in the range of Pile Blast, the last card in Crane's hand. And this is something that, when you re rewind the game, right? When I was saying, look at his damage. Look at this what, when he had the Falmos in the hand. Look yeah. at how much damage can he burst. He just needs additional cards to like just kill the yeah. Druid. And it's also, like really good play keeping the Ice Lances. Because he could have burst and then just gone, oh, you know, I'll just put it all in this turn and just carry on after that. But he kept the freezes to stall out one more turn because, you know, obviously the size of Karolinka's board well, was definitely was a threat. Super interesting that he actually got double fireball off the top, then uh, that was exactly what he needed. Something yep. like a secret w where he normally is a mage, one of the secrets would be really bad for him. But now on the back of those double frostball, double Icelands, double fireball and the pyroblast, Karolinka is losing this match, but I would say the very beginning was unlosable. Yeah, and how crazy with Kazem Mystic in the deck. It's, it's the still only <laughs> way you can win this matchup when your opponent plays Kazem Mystic and is playing Druid and you just avoid playing the secrets <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and you just draw no every value. single damage <laughs> and your opponent is sitting without the en Ancient of Law because when you think about it, Druid has had two outs to heal himself up. With Ancient of Law, yeah. Yes, and there's always also also an option to... Lothab. Instead of, yeah, the Lothab and also instead of playing the Emperor last turn, Karinka could have used the hero power to get out of the range of the Pyro but at the same time she wasn't putting the damage out yep. there. So there was a there was a decision to make. Do I go for the win or do I go for the survival? And by judging how Crane was playing, I think it was maybe uh, maybe justified to um, go for the armor instead. How would you justify going for armor up when you're playing p playing versus freeze mage with 20? Uh, you have 21 or 22 points of health. 20 but 20 he already armor. started bursting down. With uh, yeah, he did use frostbolt and ice lance, but you were still at 21. Would you really assume uh, freeze mage has two so fireballs it, and it, a pyro blast? It's there? definitely a tough choice, and I think the combination of the burst coming straight from hand. So you know, Alex Strauss is a non factor in, in the matchup mm -hmm. to a certain extent, and also the fact that there was still no secrets played. So it's not like his hand was a mad scientist or ice blocks or things like that. Yep. It was um, you, you could probably make make at least you know a decent call that there's a lot of burn in hand or just a lot of control. But you know, you saw two blizzards, for example. So you've, you've, seen, you've seen you've seen a Torch, you've seen two blizzards, you've seen fr uh, frostbolt, double frostbolt, actually, right? So the only yeah. ice, the, the only things in hand were ice lances. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, you could make that call, but it was a really definitely hard. Call. But this is going to be a really interesting match, actually, because Karolinka's bringing a deck we haven't seen for a while in a lot of competitive play. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, there we go, the, the Mech Mage deck. Wow, so right. a deck we all know and love from, from a few months back, or a fair few months back, should I say now. It's um, amazing against Druids, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, but look at that opening hand. That's actually looking amazing. Yeah, it's a great opening. And I just want to remind all the viewers that this is the last hero standing format, which means that Crane, because he won for, with the Freeze Mage, he killed the Druid, and now he has to stay with uh, the Freeze Mage that he won with. I guess that's not sad. Uh, not the saddest scenario for him. That it's he great. Knocked out the druid, and look at that. He's playing novice engineer. So I'm guessing that he plays the Reno Jackson. He might case. be. He might be. Yeah. Yeah. This is a really good start for Crane as well, though, because he does have the Mad Scientist on t uh, on one with the coin. He does have Frostbolt in hand, so he has the answers to maybe slow this deck down longer, uh, long enough to survive. And something that Mech Mage uh, definitely suffers from is the ability to just burn out of cards and sort of just run out of juice overall and not being able to quite finish the matchup. So it's uh, going to be a tough one for Karolinka, I think. The problem of this matchup is it's like Freeze Mage versus Zoo, but you don't have that many sticky minions as a, as a Mech Mage. So as Mech Mage, you don't have the Defrattle effects. You really hope to have a big enough board in the very beginning to be able to, to get the Mage to maybe 10 and then finish him off with the Frostbolt, Fireball, some things. But if you're not able to do this, Ooh. Freeze Mage just, just destroys you. Now that's quite unlucky. She that's didn't unlucky. She didn't draw uh, a mech for turn 3. So her only chance to get a mech right now is to get the Unseen Portal, but then she doesn't have a way of playing the, uh, of, of using the Hero Power this turn to ha get the guaranteed kill on the yeah. right side. So I really like the decision here to just avoid uh, losing the Cogmaster, which will put a lot of weight on this board if she gets um, a mech next turn. The Gorilla is an option. 
but it's yeah. quite underwhelming when it comes to the value of it. Yeah, the right Cogmaster is one of those weird cards, isn't it? Where like you look at it on the board now and it's a one-two, and you're like, oh, that's fine, no problem. But you know, the second a mech drops, it's pushing for significantly more damage, so it does require. Yeah, it, it does require removal, and as well, so does the Mana Worm, because again, that's of a similar situation where, you know, unimpressive early on, but, you know, a couple of spells later, and it's pushing for quite a lot of damage, so the Torch did go on to the Mana Worm there, so the Cogmaster is going to stay alive, and we'll have to see what Karolinka Unstable Portal's into. Uh, oh, wow. That's not great. That's not really what you want to see, is yeah. it? Yeah, like, you are really hoping to get a legendary card, something sticky, something big, but uh, this, this, this does put free power on board. Yeah. That's a really interesting turn, though. What do you think about the ping there versus playing the uh, the gnome? Because you could have put a mech on the board and pushed for some more damage. I would definitely go for that. Yeah, because you're going into turn four as well, so it's not like I don't want to overcommit the board for AOE. Mm -hmm. You're one turn away from Frostnova Doomsayer, and uh, you then an additional turn away from Blizzard. So really interesting choice there, because also you get the part. So yeah, I but the, the reason why she kept it is that she has the Gorilla Bot in, uh, in, in her hand. Ah, to come on next turn. She wants to get the the drop from yeah. it. It's basically a draw, right? That is uh, being narrowed down to Max and the situation. And probably if if she would have played the Clockwood Gnome, it would have been pinged. Yep. And then your Cog um, um, sorry, Cogmaster would have the problem again of having lower damage and you would not have the combo for the Gorilla Bot. Uh, so I kind of like it. Yeah, that was... Uh, Definitely. Ooh. Good explanation, and it was done really well as well. Um, here, Sneeds, probably. Uh, we are getting closer to turn 8. Blinktron can be too random for you. But it would be funny, Blink though, Blinktron, Tron, yeah. It <laughs> it's a real tough one, because Sneeds is really sticky, and you know, obviously the legendary that comes out could be insane and potentially win you the game. But with Blinktron, you're less concerned about your own health to a certain extent in this matchup as the Mech Mage, and more concerned about bursting down the opponent. So there's definitely, you know, I do for both there. There are two say. problems for Blinktron, I think. The first one is Mage has uh, your opponent has freezes overall, and then if he gets a, a good weapon, he can trade in your minions. And you don't want to give your opponent more ways to trade into your minions when you have a board. And uh, Sne a Sneasel Shredder is a big minion that's hard to deal with because there is no silence for Freeze Mage, so he will have to deal with first Sneeze and then with whatever drops from it. And it's really close to turn 8 anyway. To be honest, like when you think about it, how many ways of stopping your opponent f uh, from attacking with a weapon are there in the freeze mage. There are only two Icelands. Yeah, That's basically two Icelands, two Frostball, right? Two Frostballs, uh, Icelands, yeah. Yeah, but uh, you want the Frostballs most likely to d kill minions, right? So don't we... Probably that's that's what I'm usually counting in, in, counting in those um, in those classes that are playing weapons, that the, the thing that will out-tempo you is Icelands, and your opponent is running low on cards uh, sorry, uh, your opponent is not long, uh, going long on cards, so do you have to make the, like the the the, the calculation, how much damage c can give you the random weapon, and what will be the um, the result of your opponent spending li ice lances to your face while there are still minions on yeah. board? I think it's mostly about killing the minions from the freeze mage, like giving freeze mage an opportunity to kill that cogmaster instead and of. This is why I like the weapons against fr freeze mage in general because you don't care about the weapon for the mage, it's for the opponent's freeze mage, because he will use the weapon to kill your minions. They will de deal the damage. Sure, that's fine. You push him for damage, but your 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 own hero can get additional, let's say, 10 damage from a single card, which is insane when you play against Freeze Mage. Unless you get the Light Justice. Yeah, well, <laughs> then it's 4 <laughs> There's damage. There's always a risk, <laughs> right? That, that 4 damage, it's not that bad. Yeah. This is an interesting one, though, because Karolinka, although you definitely just don't want to leave Emperor up, I just don't think it's something you can do. But at this sort of, uh, at, at this point in the game, there's definitely a temptation to just go hyper-aggressive here, um, because the longer the game goes on, the harder it's going to be for uh, for Karolinka to close this one out. And Ooh, Sneed's actually going to really help. Slight misplay from Karolinka. She didn't buff the man yeah. of them. Yeah, I so probably should have played it first. Uh, I thought she, she would be keeping it in hand for a possible flame strike, so to not lose it to a flame strike. Maybe that was their first notion as well. Let's but hope he w she will not be. that the one damage will not be a deciding factor yeah. in this game, because this this will be like one of the games when you say to yourself, well, I fucked up. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> for want of a better phrase, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, you know, it definitely could have an impact, as well, uh, especially because of how close the game is. You know, Karolinka's got a, a decent board with potential for a lot more damage, say from that Mana Worm um, and the buffed Cogmaster, of course. But Crane has a lot of cards. <laughs> yeah, is it, um, is it close, really? Because uh, when when you look at the health, he is only on fourteen, but then he has the freezes. He has. Um, Doomsayer and Frost Nova. I think the big thing's going to be for Karolinka is getting the Sneeze down next turn, or even potentially going, because she does have Archmaid Antonidas and a, uh, a spare part, right? So that's one of the ways that you can generate mm -hmm. enough damage to just sort of power through uh, these uh, these secrets. But it's definitely going to be rough. But, but on, on the other side of that, looking at Crane, although he can outlast, he doesn't really have a lot of burn himself. And, you know, Karolinka's still on 30 health, so he has the Pyro, which is nice, obviously, um, and a Frostbolt. He's absolutely still it. missing Alexstrasza. He yep. wants Alexstrasza and then he needs something. Um, but not necessarily. Like After Alexstrasza, he'll be able to maybe just Frostbolt Iceland's face and then win with the Pyroblast. And there should be nothing except for Lothlab that can uh, that can stop that. By the way, he's, I like how he's taking into account uh, that the Doomsayer might not be the best play this turn either. Uh, mm, although then there are no minions with Death Rattle effects. Because there's a 20% chance of Karinka having a switch. Yep, the insta kills it. Insta kill of the Doomsayer from the uh, Clockwork Norms. I really like how he made that calculation and just went for the survival to get more chances of clearing the board with a top deck Blizzard because he plays two of those. Uh, another. Um, well, he has a Blizzard actually in hand. Oh, he has? Yeah, he has Blizzard in hand. The thing is, like, there was only eight damage on board. That's why he didn't have to. Yeah, I think it was so. more, um, you know, play the Ice Baron, get the Ice Block up play the Ice Barrier and, and just get use out of it and get the effective heal for eight. Cause it's, you know, Mech Mage isn't really one of those classes or one of those decks that can really ignore the Ice Barrier and try yeah. and kill you another way, especially after you've seen one Fireball already into the Emperor. So that was that was a nice play. Now Sneed's on the board. We're probably going to see a Blizzard from uh, Crane to slow this down. Yeah, and it's there as well. Like most of the Freeze Mages, when they play, they, they just don't throw the AoE effects. If they can take up to eight damage, six, four, even 10 sometimes, if they don't die w w when the 10 damage is hitting them, they're just fine with that. Because if you throw the freezes and Doomsayer early, and if, if it gets stopped, you'll be in a bad spot. By the way, I kind of would like to see the ping from Crane going to the um, to one of the minions to play kind of around, you know, any ways of clearing the Doomsayer and telling your opponent, well, I have Flame Strike, don't put more minions on board, right? Yep. And when he pinged the face of the of Karolinka, uh, he was also saying, well, there's no Alexstrasza as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's it definitely does signify that, yeah. Um, Harrison... I'm and counting a burst now. This is 16, 26 damage in hand. So maybe he can start pinging the face. <laughs> hmm. Well, the Forgotten Torch kind of stacks up. <laughs> so... Why don't you go with the Pyroblast this then? No. I well, like I mean, maybe because I the Pyroblast won't be having a turn when you can combine that with the hero power. I, I don't hate the Forgotten Torch on uh, Harrison Jones and ping it. And still waiting for Alexstrasza. See, one more turn. Uh, the 2-4 is not doing much. And uh, I, if you've seen one Fireball already. And if, if even if you start pinging the face, you will have to ping three times, right? Because this is how much damage? 60, 19, plus uh, 7, 26, yeah. But yeah, it, you, you it have depends additional how much. Frostbolt, additional yeah. Ice Lance, additional Fireball, and I'm not guessing there's additional Forgotten Torch, but there's like four outs. Yeah, you could go uh, Fireball, Torch, Frost Nova, and then just gain yet another, like another turn for the Ice Pocket. Sure. Um, oh, okay, so he's, he's going to just he's go going for the, the ping damage. instead. Okay. Yeah, he just needs like two more damage, basically, right? Yep. And he has the ping next turn, and then if he actually survives and he has still an Ice Block, he'll win with the ping. Yeah, the Gobl Goblin Blast Mage, definitely not a card you want to have when you don't have any mechs on the board, although Karolinka does have Antonidas, Frostbolt, and uh, potentially even just to play an Emergency Cooler. It's probably not worth um, but because she won't be able to ping this turn, uh, then you know she, that two four can't be used anyway. So yeah, I f I definitely, I think you can change it to fireball. Uh, it's not like you really want to freeze anything on the freeze mage side. Well, fireball instead of a two attack next turn. I guess that's fine. Right? Seems okay. Yeah, I like it. 
And also, there's, there's there's a chance you both could get frozen anyway, right? You know, so I, I like this. Just you know, cash in the fireball straight away, and because uh, this is you know like lethal over two turns for now at least. True. So what did Crane got? Uh, he has Pyroblast, Frostbolt, Iceland this turn to deal 17 damage, and then he needs two more damage for the next turn. If he gets something like uh, Thalnus, that will be enough. If he gets a Fireball. Um, yeah, there's definitely he's definitely got a lot of outs there to to push in, uh, push in for the lethal. It's just going to be tough because the block's almost certainly going to uh, almost certainly going to get propped this turn. Absolutely. Oh, oh, he got ice stones. Is that ice it? Then? Well, that's um, additional four damage. That's thirty now. So you can go for pyroblast to face, um, and then if there is a lothab, that's awkward. But if there is no lothab, just win. Yep, I think you have to make that play. Uh, you can you go for frost like frostbolt, Iceland's Iceland's frost nova. No, there's the the, the block ice block is getting popped. Anyway. Yeah, frost nova doesn't do anything because you know for a fact that there's the fireballs in the hand. So I think there's no point even trying to worry about this board at, at this moment because you have so much burst. Uh, so I I just like the over two turn lethal. He can do it either way really. It doesn't make too much difference. I don't think. He's using it away. Yeah, you can do that. Just yeah. You can, right? You know, you can fit it all in, so why not? Cast a mystic. <laughs> it's interesting to see that Crane had twice. Uh, well, that's a Cast and Mystic. That's a Cast and Mystic. Uh, <laughs> it's possible, actually. Crane has double-time double, double -time draw that he is making a really huge difference for him. Oh, that would be perfect for the Sayer. What I mean by that is that he is drawing a certain way of uh, he's drawing in a certain way that makes some strategy switch from the usual way of playing freeze mage into like kind of like face shaman style it's burst yeah. mage yeah it's like well i don't care about what you're saying i'm just like banging your face <laughs> with spells and it becomes really scary. That's where Ice Block shows its true power as well, because like this situation where I'm guaranteed one more, or at least 99% guaranteed one more turn, and I have so much burst, like you say, like like a, a sort of aggro shaman deck. They're like, you know, you won't survive that turn because you don't have Ice Block. So uh, this is definitely an, another rough game, and we've seen him. Um, I did actually speak to Crane just before this match, and I, I asked him about Freeze Mage. I was like, what do you think of this? In, you know, in this tournament format. And he was like, yeah, it's, it's pretty good, you know, like with a, a band's help would help, but this is no band format, he said. But also, like, I'm just pretty good at the deck, so I'm, I brought it. And I was like, that's as good a reason as any crane, and uh, going 2 0 up is definitely a good start. Yeah, he's now 2 0 with the Freeze Mage, and he stays with the deck. Now he'll uh, face another deck from Karolinka. So, is that a warrior for the last, the last one? Um, it looks like Warlock. It? Maybe that was a warrior for Crane. Crane has for sure. Oh, a Crane, yeah. 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 But uh, he still has sticking to his sticking to his guns, which is the freeze mage. And Karinka needs to bring uh, last deck, and now she needs to free o Crane with this deck that she will be using for this game, which is Zoo. Yeah, it's a, it seems like it's a Chinese or NA prelim Zoo with enhanced mechanical sea giants and uh, what was that on oh, Leroy? Yeah. The yeah, and then uh, there's no Doom Guards in this deck normally, so it doesn't run the Doom Guards, two sea giants, and Leroy for the, for the burst, and obviously the enhanced self is some. Uh, Crazy things like we saw in the uh, NA <laughs> prelim where Chucky managed to land at Win Fiori on both his Sea Giants, which this was a the same in Hearthstone Champions League. He had oh, a situation really? where he had a Sea Giant and got the Win Fiori on it. So, uh, yeah, 16 to phase is uh, something that ends games pretty fast. Yeah. The funny thing is, Chucky got the Win Fiori and the double Sea Giants and still lost because he was against Freeze Mage. Or did he? Oh, like in the match? I think he, wo he won that game. Did he? I think he won the game, yeah. Okay. It's really hard I'll to do that. I'm not sure though. It was it, I was blinded by the awesomeness. <laughs> okay, so the Zoo versus Freeze Mage matchup definitely one Zoo I feel can win, especially this variant with the Giants, um, because it has a, a lot of trade-up potential with the likes of Dark Peddler giving you additional power overwhelming. So the, you know the, there is a world in which you can just power through so quickly, and yeah. if the Freeze Mage just doesn't quite draw enough stall uh, with the addition of like eggs and things from the Zoo, the minions are so sticky and always just last on the board that they can definitely just push through the. Uh, Push through the damage required. Yeah, overall this matchup is bad for Zoo because Freeze Mage has the standard strategy of just freezing and there is not enough burst, but with this, with this new build with Leroy, there is some burst. Big creatures, as you've mentioned, even Encanto Meccano can actually give Divine Shield to minions to protect them. Uh, and uh, you have also things like Nerubian Eggs at some point. Uh, this deck runs Nerubian Eggs, right? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. 
But also, like, you know, you, you can't really count out the potential of four power overwhelmings in a game. Uh, not super likely to have four, but like threes, you know, pre pretty probable. Uh, we saw from the dark peddler there where he didn't get a PO opportunity, but, you know, the, the additional plus four damage uh, that you can do potentially, like, you know, two, three times in a match definitely starts to stack up and might just be too fast for the freeze mage. But yeah, I, I agree. The freeze mage is favored overall. Lothar, do you like the hand for Crane? I'm just thinking, if he's not playing Reno Jackson, the only reason why he is bringing the novice engineer is the fact that he's playing a more bursty version of, of Freeze Mage, and he wants the immediate immediate draw for having the lethal out, right, for the last burst, for the last additional Roaring Torch, or whatever will be happening in the game. So I really like the way he, he built the deck, if he's not playing the Reno Jackson. We still didn't see it, and we see yeah. We saw quite a lot of, of, of cards. Not the biggest fan of the of the uh, of this zoo iteration, though. It feels like can have can have so, uh, such a clanky clunky draw, right? The, a lot of cards are so um, synergetic with other cards that I need to be on the board um, at that time. And what was the always the strength of zoo was the fact that you're just playing efficient minions. And you're not relying on some wacky combos that are you can put on, on in the deck, yeah. right? And that was the strength, and now you're just deluding it. I think right? the idea with this version is definitely based on the current meta. Yeah. Of a lot of other people are playing Zoo as well. So, so the way Zoo wins it doesn't really run any AOE. It just builds the board up. So if they're building the board up as well as you, it makes your Sea Giants much easier to, to play. Also, Secret Paladin is all about the board as well. And Reno so Lock having the the br yeah, like you need the burst to to burst it. Yeah. So I just think uh, the, the how popular like sort of board dependent decks are at the moment makes the Sea Giant Zoo pretty good. I've not played too much with myself. I'm playing a mm -hmm. bit more of the standard Curve Out Five version. <laughs> but um, but th this is looking a uh, this is looking okay for Carolyn I'd say nothing too crazy. Uh, there is a PO and there is an Owl, which is super important. Um, and you know some decent pressure on the board. I uh, probably kind of want to see a Bran at some point soon just to get the. Uh, Extra potential damage from cards like Abusive or say Dark Iron Dwarf if there is one. Is it, it really is decent though? It's only seven damage, right? So at this point, like Crane doesn't even need to to clear it out. Yeah, I think it's I think it's okay. The, it, the problem. That, sorry, go on. Is that deck even playing Bran? Because I was thinking about what no, you it's said. Not. No, it's not. No, it doesn't. No, this but one it doesn't. will be super crazy with and cancel Mechano. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, <laughs> well, this is the thing now because they're actually list popping up with Bran in this list, but it's like something that's only been happening very recently. And just talk about these peddlers. They've not been given the best options of one drops in the world. Come on, Secret Keeper. <laughs> when the mage already has two secrets played. He will want to play one more barrier <laughs> so he can buff your, your dude. That two three is going to win the game, Nymph. It sometimes <laughs> does, actually, versus speed mage. Uh, but yeah, the board is uh, almost full. And th that's, that's the problem for um, for Zoo, you just don't have enough space on the board. And sometimes, uh, even if there is a Doomsayer, right now, how many minions do we have? Because there might be a situation where um, Crane will be able to maybe ping the egg, get another 2-1, fill out the board to avoid an Owl being played, just to block the Owl. Yeah, it's something you definitely got to be aware of, especially playing in this matchup. But look, looking at the hands now, Crane is, is in another position where um, he has a lot of burst from hand and... Kalink is hitting the point of Zoo in this matchup where you start to think, can I actually continue to tap every turn? Um, yeah. Because you start, the second I would say you drop below 20, you you really need to think about every single turn and what, what your health is going to look like. Because the Freeze Mage, even without Alexstrasza, can, can, as we've seen, do quite a lot of damage over the course of a couple of turns. Absolutely. She's in a point where she can't really play m more minions because he, sh uh, she has so much death rattle. Yeah. on the board or just minions spawning minions like the uh, like the egg that she has right now but the problem is if she got over commits then of course freeze mage has the advantage of clearing the board easier uh, than it would normally be but then she can't tap because she already has a lot of cards in hand but if she doesn't put a lot of more damage on board there's not enough pressure right and that's the problem with the, with the zoo that is relying <laughs> oh on. Oh my on god. Himself. He's going for it. I was like thinking, yeah. he, was, he was thinking about Ice Barrier because this board is not that big. So normally you would put the Ice Barrier, but he's already going for the first finish. Well, what's, <laughs> what's crazy about this as well is if you actually just look at the board, even with, because what Karolinka probably wants to see is one of the, the bigger draws. Because when you're looking at two implosions in your hand versus Freeze Mage, that kind of sucks. But 
even the two novice engineers stop Karolinka trading away any of her minions. <laughs> like, none of them die when they trade in, because you'd want to, like, throw one away and then maybe drop a bigger minion if she had it, or even abusive to push for a bit more damage, but nothing dies, so it's still such a, a rough position where just pushing for pretty much no damage at the moment. Yeah, it's like seven with the abusive. It's nothing. Freeze Mage is still at 25, and uh, Crane still has... Um, Ice Barry in the hand. He has enough burst. He doesn't have enough burst to, fi to finish the game, but again, if he draws into something like small, uh, he will have enough. No, and he's playing all burst. All burst. All burst? <laughs> only, only burst? <laughs> yeah, only burst. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a chance that, I mean, we've not seen Antonidas from Crane yet, right? So is, no, this, the, is this the Antonidas less deck? Might because it runs the uh, torches and the fireballs, so you just don't need Antonidas. You're right, he's actually running double fireball and one torch at least, right? What yeah, interesting. That's a that's a fair point. He might, yeah, I know. It, I think it's a let me think, it might have been Laughing that was playing that this list recently or, or popularized the list. I might be wrong on that. I'm not a freeze mage uh, kind of say whatsoever, but yeah, this is um. This is so much damage, and again, Karolinka's not drawn into these Sea Giants or even a low or just anything that's big to actually uh, pressure the board. And How much damage is it? Is th this is 19, and he has an Ice Block. She cannot pop the block this turn, which means that next turn he's able to ping again and then win in two turns, and that's it. Yeah, th this, is, this is a real problem, because th there was also, depending on what her hand was, probably not with this hand, but if she had some else in there, there was definitely potential of just letting the Doomsday kill the board because it's just full of small minions. It's like when you get the implosion off and it's like, yeah, I've got a lot of 1-1s, one but that's maximum 7 damage a turn, which just isn't enough. But I think Karolinka's like been really unfortunate here and suffered from just not drawing any of her you know, bigger impact minions throughout the game. Yeah, and this Fireball doesn't even change anything. This game was 1-4 um, Crane, last turn at least. Well, again, Crane just gets the amount of damage he needs and just burst down the opponent by while stalling. So this is the strategy of this deck and I really like the addition of two novice engineers instead of loot quarters because he doesn't and care that much about trading. Yeah, and then plus this is a it sort of adds to the to the style of the deck where if it is just all the burst without the Antonidas, for example, then you just want to cycle, right? You just cycle into all your bursts, survive mm -hmm. and then go and this deck is running a Doom Guard, okay, so we're already sort of interesting variant, not the standard one we've uh, sort of come to know over the past couple of weeks. This is something I uh, wanted to point out last turn, that the PO probably should have been played that turn to make yep. space on the board, because if there would be an, uh, another Frost Nova, you are caught up in a situation when you can't really develop anything. Yeah, you can't play cards. So having a space on board, like the, the PO should have been played on the Defender of Argus last turn, to just make the space on board and have more options. Yeah, because the thing is as well, like in fr against Freeze Mage, you're not trying to do a one-turn burst. You can't yep. kill them because of Ice Block. So as long as you get the damage in, I mean, Freeze Mage aren't even running really heal bots or anything anymore. So once you do the damage, it's done. So uh, you definitely would much rather have the space on the board to be able to, you know, whip in some other minions. But that is going to be game. And uh, Crane, pretty impressive performance with his mage and the dual, uh, dual advantage of hiding his other two decks. Absolutely, that's a great advantage uh, in the Swiss and especially being on stream. But Karolinka is not out yet. Uh, she still has four more rounds to play and uh, maybe we'll see her in top 16, you know. Uh, if you start, if you lose the first match, you will be playing versus players who lost their first match as well. So in theory, the weaker players. Well, you know, <laughs> you can say the weaker players, but this is not, not an open tournament anymore. Yeah. It's a qualified Play, uh, it's a qualified players only tournament, so I guess every single player that will be playing here will be decent, right? At least. Oh, Crane, here we go. Squeeze in. How are we doing, man? Uh, I'm doing fine. Uh, I'm, I'm doing fine, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. That, that's like the, the thing we have to do since Artos has started. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I remember. So uh, that was quite a quick match, Rio, with the, with the freeze mage, right? Because you change a lot of things. You have novice engineers in your deck. I guess this is the reason. The reason why you put them is because you're playing more burst, right? And you need the immediate uh, uh, immediate draw, or is it something else? Uh, uh, well, well, it's, it's, not, not, it's, it's not, not it's not my deck, deck but, but uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've been, been taught, taught in the ways of freeze mage by laughing, who's probably the best freeze mage player in the world, and he's he, he favors this version. version. I've been trying, trying to, to test it for a long time. time. Uh, where at, at first I didn't like it, but the, when I got accustomed to it and I kind of practiced with him, mm -hmm. I, I think the list is uh, it's better than the Antonidas list, I think. Okay. Uh, of course, it's meta-dependent, but without the Hondas in the meta, 
seems to be the better way. Yeah, that was a really peculiar situation in the first game because your po uh, your opponent Karolinka mm -hmm. had a Kazan Mystic in her in a oh. in her hand. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. if you would have drawn the ice block, you would have lost. Uh, okay, because. She had the option. It's one of those worrying it. moments now. Is it's yeah. like, oh, that was <laughs> close. Sometimes was lucky, close, I guess. Yeah, but and I was sure sitting there like, like, oh, come on, not getting the scientist and all that. But yeah, but that I guess would be happy. that oh, was lucky. actually um, the most important thing. You did draw the cards that you yeah. needed to win the game, which was the burst. When the cards that you you usually would like to have was were the cards that you would uh, would have lost you the game. Yeah. yeah. So Crane, how does it how does it feel um, first sitting in that chair and playing the match live? Actually, it's really nice with the the noise blocking. I haven't like I've been at some other events where it's actually kind of hard to focus if the noise isn't blocked because you can hear people. So I don't know. For, for me, it was actually um, pretty nice. I, I guess maybe a little bit of nerves. I didn't play perfectly, but it was okay. It really you worked need for that you. Experience, okay. right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I've been. I've been having this thing recently where I've been in a kind of a slump where I make this, I make a lot of good lines, but then I make like one misplay on the rope where I change my mind and then I forget all the things I've thought about in the turn <laughs> that makes me want to go for this line. I forget it and then I play a frost nova when I'm supposed to keep it for, for the, the random uh, counter spell. Like that was the whole idea of that turn in game two where I was like, okay, keep the nova, then if she has a counter spell, the win because I can, like, you know, I can pick it. The Nova, Nova and then the block, block again. again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then at, at the, the end, end of the rope, I think to myself, myself like, like if, if I, I play, play the Nova, Nova she'll have to also spend mana on, on you know, killing me. me. So, so there are also things that she, she can't do. But yeah. I don't know. It, it was, was a mistake. mistake. Well, yeah. those are the small things that people are usually not aware of. And they really matter. And uh, I'm, I'm sad. sad. And I know laughing. He's like, laughing, sitting home. He's crying. He's like, you don't play like this. You play better than this. But, uh, yeah, overall it's happy with the line. It's good so. to hear uh, how a player thinks because the people argue that Hearthstone is a low sk uh, sk uh, low skill uh, game, right? With the low <laughs> skill yeah, seating, but it's laughable. not. Yeah, well, it's, it's super hard. hard. The, the, the game, game nobody plays it even close to perfectly. Uh, that's, that's how hard the game is. The only, only thing you can argue is how big of an edge you get by playing perfectly. Mm -hmm. That's the only like. That's the only thing at the moment you can discuss, but as to playing perfectly, nobody's close to it. Okay, good to hear. Raven, any questions to Crane? Uh, no, just uh, congratulations, 3-0, good Thanks. start. Obviously, yeah. ex-teammate and friend of mine, so uh, yeah. happy to see you do well so far. Thanks. All right, uh, we actually have some statistics for you guys, so uh, let's see what we have uh, prepared in, uh, in just a moment. But uh, overall, that was a great uh, first match. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, so congratulations, Crane. You have still four more matches to go in the Swiss format. Do you think you can easily make it? Nah, you cannot easily make anything. But if I had to like put a percentage, I would say like I was 90% to go to top 16 uh, before the beginning of the day. Now I'm not 1-0, so maybe a little bit higher. But it's Hearthstone. I have to play, well, I have to play maybe better than this if I want to do it. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, okay. Swiss, you need, uh, if you have 4-1, 5-0, you're of course through. Uh, some of the players of um, my math is not bad. I think 3-2 three three will f throw goes through, right? There might be one player that will be 3-2 that not going to make it, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. I ha you, Like m what we did in the offline events, we always had the pyramid, right? Like, yeah, like yeah, seeing exactly. who is going through and who is not. But uh, all the other players were playing at, uh, uh, they are maybe still playing, because that was the fastest freeze mage match I've seen in a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was, was it was a, a slow 3-0, but it was... Fast game, freeze mage set. Yeah. Freeze mage. <laughs> I mean, I just <laughs> threw the burst, <laughs> right, so I had to play offensively. Yep. I think Laughing would at least be happy that I played offensively. <laughs> so I'll, I'll cling on to that. Okay. All right, so thank you so much and good luck. Uh, oh, one more question, though. Who would you like to face? Are you the guy who wants to face... Uh, the European champion, or, or do you want to avoid him till maybe the, the top top sixteen, top eight? I don't know. Like I, I, I get, get what, what I, I get. get. I, I think, think it's, it's just about how I play, play myself, myself. and uh, like it's, it's about, about the, the, the matchups, matchups also. also. Like, like what what, what decks they bring. bring. So it, it's, it's not, not just, just about how good the player is. Like, like there's, there's so many. The preparation, the better game is a huge yeah, factor, like right? Some somebody might have Warrior and Druid in his lineup, and then suddenly my Freeze Mace looks like it's the worst pick in the world to bring for this tournament. Well, so imagine if really if that Kazan Mister would have be actually played. 
game one, right? <laughs> I was not happy <laughs> to see that druid, man. I was not happy. Uh, yeah, it, it was, was the, the only, only one where like, like the druid, druid was annoying for my priest mates. I was hoping that you'd kill kill one of the others. But uh, so and and I, when I sit there and I have the ten damage pyroblast, she just needs a low thip or a heal. I mean, I'm, I think for sure this game is over. So yeah, pretty lucky. Okay. Sometimes lucky. <laughs> that was still you played really well and the congratulations again. But now we are ready to go into the break. So stay tuned for more Hearthstone after a short break when we prepare the next match for you.